G'day, I'm Adam. And I'm Kira. And we're doing the big lap with our dog, Rick. <laughs> We've been on the road for six months now, so this week's episode is a little different. If you enjoy our adventures, just hit that like and subscribe button and follow along with us. Rock and roll. This is a mirror. Make sure I don't do an up skirt. Yeah, make sure I don't do an up pants. Do you want to say hello? Alright. Uh, do you want to say hello? Yeah. Are <laughs> <Hey>, yeah. <laughs> G'day guys. G'day. So we're doing a uh, Q&A for a roundabout. Yep, so we've just completed six months on the road full time. So we put up a little question box on Instagram and Facebook for anyone to let us know if they've got anything they want to ask us. Yep, and so here's... Uh, Question top, one. Yeah, top 14. <laughs> In case people are planning to do a trip like us or yep. they're just nosy. <laughs> All right, so I've got them written down on my phone. In no particular order. Question one. Question one. Top tips for traveling with a dog? Good question. Um, <laughs> it is harder with a dog. Definitely harder, but yep. it's also very very rewarding as well. Yeah, he's um, our family, so we didn't even think about leaving him behind. That nah, wouldn't have happened. Um, dogs are for life, that's how I feel. Um, definitely. Yeah, you do miss out on national parks, which is obvious. Yep. Um, I think you what's... You do find places that are close to national parks. Yeah, like right next to it. Like um, Esperance was Albany one. as well was good. There was good yeah. spots nearby. So like Esperance, everyone knows about Lucky Bay and the huge hype, but there's so many beaches that you can take yeah. the fur baby with you. I didn't think... I didn't feel like we missed out on Definitely anything. Definitely not, no. Um... You see, you see plenty of roos out on the road, so it's not like you're missing out on seeing roos as well. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the other thing is it can be tricky. So if there's rainy days, you can't do rainy weather activities like going to the cinema, the going to the shops, going to museums, um, because those places, obviously, you can't take a dog inside the building. So you're sort of left with one person holding the dog outside and taking turns, which means each thing you do takes twice as long as, wo as well because you've got to do it individually. And then it's not as fun when you've got to do it individually. No, it's not. Because you feel like a rando yeah. <laughs> just going, going in on your own and taking turns. So it has been more difficult. Yeah. It has also meant we've had to be a bit more selective as to where we stay because it obviously has to be dog friendly for yeah. that reason too. And yeah, that's something to look into, you know, when you're around the school holidays, periods a lot of the caravan parks won't allow dogs yeah but they'll their... take dogs the rest of the year yeah so it's something to be mindful when you're looking at places to stay yep um and then the other thing is make sure that their all the vet stuff is sorted you know with their ticks and their um, worming loose. medication and stuff and then we've got one of the Ceresco, i think is the brand but you've got a special tick collar particularly for the east coast yeah. um so we've got that and that lasts eight months now it used to be four months but you just got to keep on top of those um and then definitely needed uh, what else was there you got to check them for like grass seeds and prickles yeah <laughs> just and the little stuff so you just watch them and if you can see yeah. that they're you know not they're walking a bit strange just check them out um, same as at home really yeah um and then obviously everyone's super scared of 1080 and wa in particular as you should be i guess because we're from wa we're used to it being potentially everywhere so yeah. there are maps online that show you where they drop it but birds can carry it yeah, um, so don't rely on that just basically plus keep private it, people drop keep, it as well yeah you always got that out there um just keep an eye on them um, they shouldn't be wandering too far from you because you obviously got snakes as well to be mindful of um, yeah, and then other than that, we travel with um, a first aid kit specifically for reefs. So we're not sponsored or anything, but we purchased the, I think it's vet in a van or vet in a bag first aid kit. I'll pop a link in the comments for anybody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's handy even just to have emergency tick removal. Um, or, and it's a good one because it's got really layman term instructions on what to do in case of an emergency as yeah. well so um we've been lucky touch wood yeah we, we haven't, haven't needed had it. to use it but um yeah so but that's that's something i wouldn't travel without yeah, on the lap need it. 
with a dog? What else? Um, Tips? Same right. as at home, like water. Yeah, Always have water when you go exploring. Don't go out then, um, in the heat of the day. Water collar that we had. Oh yeah. So it's just basically a a cooling sort of vest. Yeah. Yeah. And you just put under water, and that just cools them down. Yeah. So I like just from, love that. In the summer, Kmart have them, and they have like the mats as well that you can lie the dog on if you're in hot weather. Because yeah. uh, Reef's old. He's 13 year, years young. <laughs> yeah. Celebrated his birthday yesterday. So um, he doesn't handle the heat as well anymore yeah. so um those cooling collars help as well as the air cooling in the caravan yeah. <laughs> um and then yeah food and water so obviously same as at home you don't take your dog out on hot pavement in the middle of the day do the same yeah. when you're sightseeing like plan your day around Early the weather morning, yeah or, yeah in the arvo which is fine for avoiding crowds yeah. anyway but like everyone knows you know you just check the ground with the back of your hand or your foot it takes two seconds to yeah. pull the foot out of the pluggers and then his food, we kind of keep in the toolbox outside of the van because it smells. Um, but we make sure it's in a sealed container that yeah. birds can't get into because we lost a container to <laughs> some cheeky birds in Milton. Yeah. So, so it was in a container, but they just pecked away. Ate around the edge of the rubber seal. Yeah. But anyway. Um, yeah. But yeah, other than that, just enjoy it with them. There's wonderful activities you can do with them. There's hikes, there's waterfalls, Even beaches, cafes, cafes like so lots of friendly cafes. You can still take them to towns and stuff yeah. like that. And, and even in Port Macquarie, you can take it in a shopping centre. Yeah. They let your dog come in with you. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't... That was very strange feeling. Yeah. So Everyone's it's staring at you. It's something, like, it is harder, but I don't feel that we've missed out on heaps. Like, I would still take him a hundred times over. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything you wish you left behind? Um... Probably the annex. It's probably the main one. We didn't. Yep. Um, we really didn't need it. Uh, we put it up once. Found that we were, miss we were missing stuff, so it made it yeah. difficult to actually put up. Because we got our van second hand, yeah. and before we left, we didn't set up the annex. We just assumed all the poles and everything would be in there. So that's our buyer beware fault. Yeah. Um, but we've not reached for it or needed it. No. It takes up a lot of space. It takes up a lot of our weight allowance. So it would have been something handy to have definitely left home yeah. or send back but it's just yeah too much weight too bulky to post so we do have privacy screens though so we've got um one of the large side and then one on the each end yeah so just screens for shade mostly and yeah. then if we happen to be in a spot where we're in a caravan park and you need that bit of privacy it's good so we'll more likely reach for those because they're quicker to set up and they're a lot lighter a lot quicker yeah and even just so reef has a spot outside where he feels comfortable yeah He's liked it as well. And speaking of that bugger, the other thing I wish we left behind were beds for him. So we bought a fancy camping chair type bed because when we used to do weekend camping trips, he used to always try and climb on these chairs with us. Yeah. Um, so I thought to get away from the flies and the bugs. So anyway, I thought I'd buy him a, his own little camp chair, but he won't use it. And yeah. then even his own bed, he doesn't use. And then I've tried, I picked up a different bed along the way um, and he still hasn't used it. Yeah. So now we've got three beds in the caravan for a dog and he sits on the ground in the sand. Yeah. Anyway. That's if he comes out of the caravan. Yeah. The indoor cat. He's a pampered pooch. Yeah. Um, okay, top three must-have items for a lap. All right, well, I'd have to say if you're towing a caravan, you need a UHF. Yeah. It should be mandatory. Um, the amount of people that you call up and say, you know, your stabiliser leg's fallen, mate, or one of your flaps on the roof is open, the but you just hear nothing. So that should be mandatory. I think every caravan owner should definitely have one of them. I even, put mine in and that was super quick and easy. Even for the truckies? Yeah, just so you know if there's a wide load coming down your road, you know to get off the road so it leaves old mate plenty of room. Yeah. So he doesn't have to, you know, guide around you. And you can let them know that there's like a safe gap if they want to overtake. Yeah. So especially like I think the nullable was a really good one is there's heaps of rest areas, so it'd be good just to hit them up to say, hey, I'm pulling into the next rest area, so they know to back off, so they're not right up your ass and, you know, about yeah. to KO you. Because they're on a time crunch and we're not. Yeah, that's it. You're on holiday mode and they're on a uh, workload. Yeah. All right, next that's question. The second thing. Oh, yeah, that's only two things. Yeah, so what's your third thing then? I'll probably get to the second one. Wait, so UHF one. was one. What's yep. your second thing then? My second thing would be a rhubarb. Yeah. If you can put a rhubarb on your car, I highly recommend it. Just 
even if you're not going at dawn and dusk, which is when they're mostly out on the road, we've seen them during the middle of the day, you know, you just never know. So I'd have that just to protect your car, mm. um, the engine, obviously. Um, so UHF, rebar. rebar. Number three, well, because we got a semi-off-road caravan, it's quite high. So I've got a um, upgrade to my suspension just to lift it up a bit more and just to handle the actual weight, obviously, mm. of towing a caravan. Mm. So I think those are three main things that I got. Mine would be Starlink or like reliable emergency communications. So when we left, we didn't have Starlink because we thought, oh, we'll be fine. Like all the camps. Well, they all said in all the wicky camps said yeah, that you had you service, have Telstra service, and it's it, crap. You just don't. And plus the speed is crap, so you might get one bar if you're lucky. But anyway, so we ended up caving and getting Starlink. But when we set off, we set off with at least um, an emergency communicator so that if we got into strife where there's no signal, we could get help yeah. um, or if one of us gets hurt or something like that. So yeah. um, backup emergency, we had yeah. that always. Because yeah. Starlink's obviously a luxury item. It is expensive. Um, so at least get one of those little doodacky things i think we spent around 200 bucks um and you can get them from like bcf and anaconda and then at least you've got that as a backup so we still have that because adam does a lot of hiking when we weren't traveling anyway so yeah. i guess it's something you could take with you on hiking trips well, in the future i have to measure the weight <laughs> um so that's one for me two would be comfy chairs yes okay yeah which adam didn't want to take because they're bulky they're huge they're huge they're heavy oh they're not heavy for me but they're heavy so anyway um they take up a lot of room prime real estate when you're living in a small space and particularly when we set off in just a tent living out of the canopy they had to go up on the roof um but now our roof racks hardly get used <laughs> that we bought for this kind of stuff yeah. um but yeah anyway we take them and they've been like a godsend because when you're traveling full time it's not just camping for a weekend and sitting in a chair that will get you by you need something really comfortable yeah. and so these are basically our lounge chairs oh, they, and they recline and you can watch the stars like it's so nice so comfortable yeah. highly recommend them if you've got the room and obviously the yeah. weight issue as well but yeah they're yeah. just and they get thrashed and but they've done good they've not broken or anything but these are the june brands so they're not even like a super fancy brand but they are pricey because they're reclining so i think they yeah. were when i bought them around 200 dollars each so they're yeah but oh, you yeah, can i didn't know that <laughs> yes you did i wouldn't allow that <laughs> Um, but you can get what we did was get um, like a carry bag as well just to help um, so that if it's been raining or they've got grass and sand and mud or whatever on them it doesn't get in, in the, the caravan bed. so we'll put them in their little cover and then we just store them under the bed um, yeah. but you could potentially just store it on the bed or whatever yeah. or the roof racks so, um, so that's two things so Starlink chairs and my third thing what's your third thing I've forgotten what I was going to say for that question a kettle. So a kettle, yeah. Yeah, my third thing is a kettle. Huh. So no matter what setup you have, you're going to need a good cup of tea. Yeah, or, <laughs> or a coffee early in the morning to yeah. kick start and get you going. And you can do hot chocolates. Um, but also, like, I was using it at the start for, like, heating up a shower for us in a bucket. <laughs> yeah, but oh, I, the good old days. Yeah, and just cooking and stuff. So I think no matter what setup, you're going to get good use out of a kettle. All right, so that's three things each. You right there, catching beetles? <laughs> oh. Stuck with you now. Don't kill him. I'm not going to kill him. All right, next question. Would you change your setup? Well, yeah. We did. We did. So we were going to set off and do this lap in a tent um, before we bought the caravan. But <laughs> I think we lasted just, what, just over two weeks. And then we had to make the call and come home and reset and figure out what the next step was. Yeah, so when we first decided to go on the lap and we were researching different setups, um, we didn't really want to go with the caravan. We felt it was a bit over top and we preferred <laughs> camping, yeah. not travelling. Yeah, I just didn't want to tow it and I wanted to go full driving and stuff like that. Yeah, we didn't think we needed a huge caravan. So then we were looking at rooftop tents, um, but then I'm petrified of heights and the clumsiest person you'll ever meet. Yeah, and I didn't feel like carrying Reef up all the yeah. steps to get him inside. Plus going 
to the loo in the middle of the night. And then I didn't like that. You, although they're very quick to set up and pack down, I didn't want to have to set it up and pack it down just to nip out to the shops or go exploring. Yeah. So we decided it wouldn't suit us. Yeah. Um, so then we looked at fast set up tents and we went with the most primo traveling touring tent, which was the Oz tent. Yeah. So we did a few shakedown trips to test it out and we loved it for camping trips. It was great. So we yeah. thought we were good to go. Adam had, fitted out the whole oh yeah put some canopy. time and money into the back of the canopy just basically um storage as well as like a kitchen Pull set up kitchen. did all that um and yeah yeah so then we didn't really <laughs> need it in the end because with the tent we lasted just over two weeks yeah. we had like crazy bad weather we had issues cooking in the wind finding level ground for cooking for sleeping yeah. we had even having reef you know he couldn't reef freaked sleep. out sleep at night because he was worried about the animals around the tent yeah you know? um, we had widow makers falling down right near us so yeah it was just it didn't feel safe and then also, and also we had the, the downpour trend oh yeah so, so we just had like a river basically going through our it flooded the tent so lounge room yeah as good as the oz tents are it couldn't stand up to that weather so although that was probably an, an unlikely storm event to happen again oh, i disagree <laughs> i think we've had a couple now yeah Inchworth was crazy weather for a start yeah and torrential rain. the other thing was the security aspect so aside from like the branches potentially falling on you in the tent um you can't lock it yeah like you can go beep beep and just hope for the best here is in a few of the um pages on facebook and people have actually got their stuff stolen out of yeah. tents like they go on a hike or go check out something around the place and then you and raid yeah, it yeah come back and someone's just gone through all their gear yeah because like and the four-wheel driving camping industry and all the gear is so expensive and when you're in that kind of hobby i guess you learn what's of value and people target that stuff unfortunately is what we've seen yeah. but yeah so there was the security and safety aspect and just comfort so um yeah. we thought if we're doing this full time yeah. for an extended length of time it was worth um rethinking our setup so we'd got as far as the southwest um around the collie region and we pulled the pin and decided yeah. before we get too far and try and attempt crossing the nullarbor in a tent Let's make the call now. Yeah. Thank, and so, thanks, Mum and Dad, for letting us <laughs> crash at your place for a couple of weeks. Ran home to Adam's parents. Yeah, <laughs> they, were, they were lucky to take us in. Yeah, even though I knew where the spare key was. So yeah, we um, basically were in a mad dash then to try and find a caravan, and it was a whole education as well. So yeah. we that's, that's when I feel that's when we found out I had to gut I my know. whole. So all the work Adam had put <sighs> into yeah. beautifully fitting out the canopy with a pull out storage system yeah, and kitchen and all the and rest stuff. um that all had to be ripped out of the ca um the canopy again and just thrown away basically because we would have been overweight in the car so the first thing we did because we knew we had done a lot of mods we'd added like bull bar winch roof racks all sorts of stuff just for general four-wheel driving yeah. so we had had that set up on the collie anyway for our weekend adventures so yeah. we knew we had to weigh the car to see what its new sort of starting weight was to then as, figure out what we could well tow as, as well as to get educated in what yeah to be done. yeah because um, it's really confusing and like we won't go into it because we're not experts there's yeah. plenty of videos up on youtube and it's worth going to the expert to get yeah them to go through it with you and they'll measure it out and weigh your car and say hey at the front or at the back it needs yeah to be what axles you gotta whatever. worry about and where you gotta move things to so we used van way in perth and we recommend them yeah he was very good yeah basically said yeah all that work mate rip it out <laughs> so that was super stoked with and that the, and we'd nearly gone and put a deposit because we'd gone shopping for caravans first yeah. and because we, we were watching youtubers and we're like oh yeah we want an off-road definitely yeah. and they're obviously heavier um, because of the chassis or whatever um yeah. and the suspension systems and things so we were dead set on a hybrid fully off-road type yeah. setup um but they are so much heavier than the van we ended up with yeah. um and if we hadn't got weighed we would have basically bought something that wouldn't have been legal or safe for yeah. us or anyone else on the road so oh, yeah. definitely definitely recommend getting the professional weighing first yeah. Um, but yeah anyway that meant then we had already sold our house and we were basically couch surfing yeah. <laughs> so, so we had to um, find a caravan that would suit us with our weight tolerance with the collie at the new weight it is with the mods yeah. that was in stock in Perth ready yeah. to go because we yeah. didn't have the luxury of ordering something in to suit us mm. so um, that was tricky i think i went to every single caravan dealer in perth and was looking on marketplace um yeah it was yeah a scramble, but it was we found this gem and uh we absolutely love it yeah so we ended up getting a second hand 2018 
manta ray. Yeah. So it's technically an 18 foot. Um, I think it, their sizes are a little bit different because of whether they include the jewel bar or not compared to other brands. But yeah. anyway, it's a semi off road. Um, and that is more than enough. That thing is so capable. We've been on the beach, we've been on cliffs, um, yeah. going down crazy inclines and declines, yeah, that was corrugations, all sorts. Insane that first week that we had it. Yeah. And taking on some of that cliff. I wish um, if Kira wasn't so petrified at heights, she would have filmed some of it. Instead, she just had her eyes closed, yeah. grabbing the side. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a one wicked caravan, um, which kind of leads into one of our other questions. So yeah. someone said, would you recommend the New Age caravan? Hands down. So it's not something yeah. we targeted or went specifically looking for, but they are made in Australia. And like our, our van's old, it's a 2018 model, yeah. um, but nothing's really gone wrong. Like it's handled everything we've thrown at it yeah so the only thing was the um that was really bad with it was the um 12 pin plug um but that was just because of old age mm. it was just full of dirt full of crap. red dirt yeah, from the previous owners and yet yeah, basically us not checking the annex but that's such a minor thing oh, yeah, to see if the poles were there but yeah um the van itself is really really good and from what i've heard after service is fine not yeah. that we've touched wood and needed we've spoken anything. to a fair few people that do have new age as well yeah there's the heaps road. of them on the road and they they no one has any drums with them no nah, they're all happy and then there's also like the facebook groups for new age owners or manta ray model owners as well which are really helpful so if you're doing mods or you need help with stuff everyone's really helpful and really happy with their vans so yep yeah. um so would you change anything about the caravan then, I guess? Would so you change your the setup? The only thing I'd say would probably to have an inverter system in there. So we've just got a 12 volt. So when we're off grid, we can't have any 240. Mm. And that's because of the age of the van. So that was before a lot of that technology became commonplace, I guess. So um, the newer vans obviously have that as standard, I think, or a lot well, of the ones I've seen yeah, anyway. Yeah, it'd be worth looking into if you're going to buy a caravan and you have the time to shop around mm. um just to have the 240 just you know plug in just your laptop or something like that you know and then the only thing i'd change in it is i'd probably change the seating so we've got like a cafe dinette kind of two chairs with the little table in the middle whereas i'd prefer like a longer couch bench thing that i've seen but that's like getting real petty that's just because you want to cuddle me yeah <laughs> So you were saying, just be more comfortable you were saying about the lights so the lights oh, in there yeah. are basically you're in a surgery doctor surgery i don't know what it is with caravan lights or being so fluorescent they need warm lighting yeah, so you can relax but anyway that's an easy fix i guess if you want to change globes um okay next question favorite place so far so that's definitely a, a hard one because we've seen so many different places but probably one of my favorites so far would be point brown yeah, um, on the in South Peninsula. Australia. Yeah. yeah, just where we were parked on the side of a cliff, awesome ocean views, all to ourselves. Magic. It just, yeah, it didn't get much better than that. Um, yeah, it could, I could have lived there for a couple of weeks if we could. What about you, Kira? I don't know if I've got a favourite. There's lots of places I've liked, but I don't know if there's one stand out. I did like places, I guess, not so much a campground. I loved Beechworth yeah, up in the Vic nice High town. Country. Yeah. Definitely worth going there if you're going to the Highland. High, high country. country. <laughs> I always say Highlands. It should be Highlands. Yeah, it's a Australia high country. version. But anyway, that was a really beautiful town. I liked that. And it would yeah. be nice to see that in autumn with all the colours or winter, Snowy obviously, season. the snow. Um, we were there in summer over Christmas, yeah. but yeah, it was still beautiful. You wouldn't have known by our episode, though. Yeah. We would have thought we were in dead winter. Oh, and Robe in South Australia. Yeah, that was Those nice. two were probably my top two places that I really loved. Mm. Are you guys working on the road? Nope. No. So we're lucky enough to have saved up and uh, yeah. we were going to do a Europe trip. So, but then, yeah. Yeah. So we um, had planned to go on holiday to Europe for a decent length of time, but that yeah. would have meant leaving Reef at home. Yeah. And it was pretty pricey doing the type of trip in all the countries we wanted to do. Um, and it was only going to last for what, a few months. Six weeks. Or yeah. So when I was researching destinations of where to go on the Europe trip on YouTube, I started getting other suggestions on the feed of Australia trips. Um, and that's something Adam's always had on his bucket list yep. to do, is a lap of Australia. Yeah, I've always wanted to go to each state and territory yep. and go to their capital cities. 
but yeah, I hadn't really considered it. Um, and Adam was working FIFO, so we, while he was up north, I was preparing a PowerPoint <laughs> to try and yeah. convince him to do this change of plan. Um, and then, yeah, when he got home, I got about one sentence in and he was all on board. Yeah, So much easier than I thought it would be. Um, so, yeah, we're... We decided, like, for the same amount of money, you could obviously extend your travel time and do your home country yeah. um, and do it, like, in the camping lifestyle, which we enjoy doing on weekends anyway. So, um, change course there. Yeah. That was definitely well worth doing. Yeah, so we had the savings, basically, already. Then, when we looked into it, we decided to sell the house, which also topped up some funds as well. So, yeah. we don't have to work at this point. We're just yeah. going to sightsee. So, there is plenty of work out there. Um, as soon as the people find out that I'm a sparky, they hit me up straight away saying, oh, you can do some work here. Or like old mate um, at that caravan park, yeah. he was spewing because he had a sparky come a week beforehand and did two, wo two weeks worth of stuff. So he's like, oh, I could have got you today. I was like, hey, I'm on holidays, mate. Just chill out. I don't feel like doing that. Yeah, I think because they see you're a younger person, so they assume you're going to want to work. So they're always yeah. very keen to offer what's around. And um, every town we've been at, there's always been signs up at shops. Yeah. The country pubs are desperate for hospital staff all the time. Yeah, you can do... Plenty of work out there. Yeah, seasonal work, like on farms yeah. um, well, as even well. Even at the caravan parks, you yeah. know, just like... And house sitting, you've, there's yeah. heaps of options if you want it. If you do that, you sort of do a stint as a caretaker and you get like a free site in exchange yeah. as well as your wages sometimes. So it's, yeah, it's lots not, of opportunities. It's not crazy money, but it's, you know, to find the lifestyle for a bit. Yeah, it's an option. Yeah. And what a lot of people do as well is if you've got the Starlink, you can do remote work. So mm. whether that's an option to transition from the role you're doing currently, like if you're doing office work or something, um, bookkeeping seems to be a popular one on the road or mortgage broking, virtual assistance that kind of thing that's something you could do but then we've seen like people um i've seen a sign like hairdresser haircuts 20 bucks you know people chuck up a sign at the caravan park so it depends what your little hobby yeah, slash business is one. yeah um okay next question what sucks about traveling full-time um there's not much that sucks about it <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good getting sleepings and stuff but uh probably towing the caravan i'm not a huge fan of doing that um, stressful yeah i think you just got to be on the ball the whole time you know watching your mirrors watching your dials on the um the car just know what's everything's going on mm. um just be aware of what's going on you know people behind you as well as you know four cars in front of you because you know you could be t you're towing like two tons or more some people and it's a lot of weight, so you're putting a lot of stress on your car. So it's just saying to, if you can hit the brakes a bit sooner, um, you know, it could save a lot of headaches. And then you don't get to enjoy the drive because you're focused so much on towing. Yeah, and if you miss a turn, <laughs> you can suck out on the country road. And then we because, yell. <laughs> yeah, just because of the next turn to turn around could be a couple of k's away, but you know, it's still better than a, you being know, at work nine to five. Yeah. A, a bad day on holiday is still better than a good day at work. You know? Yeah. So um, we're very blessed to be able to live this lifestyle. Yeah. So towing a caravan is nothing. But if I had to say something, it'd probably be that. I'd say family and friends that we miss at home. Oh yeah, them too. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about them. So it sucks missing it. Like you wish you could just take everyone with you and go on a big convoy or something, yeah. or they could come and visit or you can visit them but so you, you yeah you do miss out on you know birthdays and birthdays weddings newborns <laughs> new baby nieces yeah so <laughs> little stuff like that which sucks but you know um okay what is your weekly budget and are you on track so we have a very flexible budget yeah. because we've got savings and we don't have an end date so yeah. we research roughly what it was costing for people with similar setups with like two adults and a yeah, dog which and was, what eight months ago before yeah we set off. and before inflation and the house Crazy, housing yeah. crisis and everything Food. really hit but we sort of thought we'd be around 800 to a thousand dollars a week mm. um but we're more like 1300 a week yeah but you could do it so much cheaper than the way we're doing it so you could do like when i was planning i thought oh you know, we love camping, we'll be free camping 90% of the time. Yeah. However, what we've noticed on the road is because of the housing crisis, a lot of the free camps are f full of homeless people. Yeah. And you feel like a wanker if you rock up in your fancy caravan and you're just doing this for fun full yeah. time and they're, they're on hard times. Like, it's not nice. Yeah. Um, and then 
the other side of the coin is a lot of those free campgrounds are packed they're busy yeah. so there's not nice spots or privacy or they're just trash they're trash full of rubbish because people can be pigs they don't clean up after themselves that's one thing that blew my mind just the amount of rubbish yeah it's people, gross you know, you've literally got a bin next to you that is empty and it's just yeah. scattered everywhere um, and then obviously with the free camps, there's less rules. So I guess you've got people using generators at all hours. You've got yeah. party goers. You've got people on dirt bikes at all hours. <laughs> um, Sounds like me back in People that the don't day. keep their dogs under control. So then that puts Reef at risk if another dog just comes off, off lead and the yeah. owner's oblivious and doesn't care. And then there's a dog fight. Yeah. So there's issues with that. And then also drug use. It's a problem yeah. that no one talks about, but there's a lot of it in a lot of the free camps. So mm. um, I guess we we pick and choose them. Obviously, we prefer it where we can, yeah. um, but sometimes it's just not the go. Like there was a place in Brisbane we drove in and drove out because it was not a safe vibe. Yeah. Um, but we found we tend to, on the flip side, not go to the extremes of the really fancy caravan parks because we don't have kids. We don't need all the fancy playground and yeah. water parks and all those facilities. We so kind of... We will go more to like the showgrounds yeah. type style. So it's a little bit more run down and, you know... Well, not even run down. It's just... Oh, they're, they're, they're more old school. Are. Yeah, okay. They're amenities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got Definitely. dated but clean amenities. But yeah, limited yeah. limited facilities without all the frills, but you get a big site. A lot bigger site and it's usually grass, you know. Yeah. yeah just not sardined. Which or is... like older caravan parks. So not the fancy big brand ones. Mm. Um, the more sort of locally run yeah. ones. Smaller will go. roads though to get in. <laughs> can be a little bit tricky. But... Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of how we've been... I guess spending more than we thought is on a lot more campsites than we thought we would yeah. and particularly on the east coast so a lot of the areas we've gone you're going through quite built up residential areas so there's no free camping you have yeah. to go to a campground or a caravan park or you get fined by the ranger and so it's shock block full yeah it's, so yeah. <laughs> oh and the other thing that's blown out the budget a bit is the food costs have increased dramatically at the supermarkets yeah, which everyone's feeling so we, yeah but yeah something we didn't anticipate when we started this yeah month. so that's different now even though we're shopping for the same Stuff, standard yeah, meals yeah. that we have all the time on rotation especially out the rural areas, yeah so there's no know. Audi all the time sometimes you've got to shop at somewhere that's not even an IGA brand it's like a local grocer and then you don't feel so bad because you're supporting the towns yeah. but still it's that's more expensive make makes you feel better when you think of it like that um, so for tracking I just use an app on my phone and then if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram we usually put up like a monthly roundup of what our stats were yeah. so if you did want to get a better idea of how we break down our weekly budget because um, everyone's setup is different everyone's got different insurances and phone plans and all that kind of stuff yeah. Um, but yeah it's a good break down each month if you did want to follow along. A bit of an insight on what you're sort of expecting to pay. Yeah. And always allow a little bit more, you know. All right, next question. Did you plan or book ahead for the trip? Yep. Um, so I love a spreadsheet and before we left, I planned a huge... <laughs> Was it six weeks or something? Six months? No, I did like six months. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, like, and I'd done so much research into like on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, like all these places we wanted to visit in each of the states and had them all like saved and mapped out. Um, and then I had like a whole journey planned in Wiki Camps and then Wiki Camps crashed and I lost everything. Yeah. So that was, that was gut fun. <laughs> <laughs> so then after that, I then only planned six weeks, thinking, oh, I'll have all the time in the world when we're traveling. I'll catch up with the planning when we're on the road. Yeah. Um, but then I found it too stressful because if you find somewhere awesome that you love, you can't extend your stay because you're mm. booked into the next place that you have a deadline to meet. So yeah. that sucks. Or if somewhere like that place in Brisbane where the vibe didn't feel right and you want to bail out early, yeah. um, you can't do that either because you obviously have to find somewhere else at short notice. So we kind of just plan a day or two in advance except for, for holidays. school holidays. Yeah, school holidays are different kettlefish. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, um, we have been heading inland, which is good because we get to see more of the actual land, you know. Yeah, more country rather than just on the coast. Yeah, so it's been really good seeing a whole heap of a nice little community. Yeah. Um, like Tamworth. We love the country towns. Yeah. We prefer it. Um, so, yes and no, we plan, but we only plan a couple of days ahead. Or even Beechworth, we went there because of it. Yeah, so we, we wouldn't have gone up inland. to high country because that's typically your winter destination, isn't it? Yeah. Um, all right, so next question done that one what was something you were disappointed in oh yeah so I've got a couple 
The first one is I went on the shark dive at Port Lincoln. Didn't see any sharks, so I was gutted. It's been on the bucket list since, since I could swim. I wanted to do something like that. Yeah, so that sucked, but um, what was the other one? Oh, came a gutter at, um, in South Australia at the Brossa. Oh, yeah. The skate park. When so, you injured yourself. So I always skate barefoot, but I don't do it for vert, which is like skate ramps and stuff like that. So I've come off at a bad angle, heard the, a pop in the leg, so I knew it was something serious. And yeah, I've, what, it's taken months. Yeah, yeah. I'd say two, three months. I've been in no skate parks, boohoo. Yeah, I still haven't gone to a skate park. I'm jumped on the skateboard now, but I wear shoes. Yeah. So I've learnt. But yeah, that put me out of action for a long time, and I missed out on a lot of surf breaks. Mm. That I would love to have gone and mm. done. That too sore. But yeah, so wear shoes on vert. <laughs> on the road, you're fine. And something I was disappointed in, I guess, when you're watching all these YouTubers, it all looks glamorous um, and you think you're going to make so many mates because everyone's fishing in each other's yeah. tinnies or you're all sitting around the campfires and stuff. I found it a little bit trickier because we're a bit of an odd belt age group. So everyone in our age range generally is a traveling family with kids, which we don't have. So all the kids play together, ergo the parents become mates yeah. and chat and hang out. And then... You've got the grey nomads, who are the yeah. vast majority of travellers we encounter, who are very friendly. Very friendly. And you'll have your quick yarn to them yeah. when you bump into them and stuff, but there's, they're clicky still. Like, I find it's, um, you don't yeah. go to the next step of being invited to pull up a chair sort of yeah. thing. So, like, I found it hard. All the younger people are all backpackers, and they're usually just doing an overnight, and they kind of keep to themselves as well. Mm, yeah. So, like, yeah. it's... Everyone kind of keeps in their own little groups. Um, so we feel like outsiders sometimes, I think. And you'd have to be really extroverted to go up and insert yourself into those social yeah. gatherings, I think, around the Which camp kitchen or campfires. We're not like that. So no, nah, not by nature. We feel like we'd be treading on people's toes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, everyone's it's, super friendly, They're super still helpful. friendly, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think that's maybe one thing. That so that's been disappointing. I thought you'd make so many friends, but it just yeah. hasn't happened. We've kind of get kept... a mate with a tinny at least so I could get some get decent some more fishing. fish. <laughs> um, all right, next question. So right. what, something a bit more positive. So what place are you looking forward to the most? So mine would probably be Darwin, just because I've, I've worked with a few people. They talk about it and hype it up quite a lot, as well as it being another... Um, capital that I can tick off my list mm. to go visit so yeah I wouldn't mind seeing that place oh, I don't know with I think mine would be just you had like five I had too many when yeah. I was trying to think of answers for this I think mine I'm going to settle on my just far north Queensland because I've always wanted to do one particular region like Port Douglas the Daintree <laughs> So the GoPro battery failed because we were talking too much and then Adam's got bored and gone for a walk. <laughs> Time out. He wants to be all by himself. But -um, but -um, but -um. Is there somewhere you want to visit again or regret not staying longer? So the only one that comes to mind straight away would probably be Port Lincoln, just so I could go out on that shark cage dive tour again um, and try my luck for a second time. <laughs> That'd be the only reason. Uh, it's a nice town, but yeah, super spewing about that. I think the same, just South Australia in general. I think. Everyone said like Adelaide's boring, South Australia's boring, but it was actually awesome. I loved it. Mm. So um, I think if I had my time again, I'd probably spend a bit longer on both of the peninsulas. Yeah, we didn't rush it, but um, it was an awesome place and I'd yeah. be happy to visit there again. All right, what apps do you use for traveling? So 
So I've got the Windy app, which is the just to give you an idea of the overall um, weather, what's going on mm. through your wind, um, rainfall, temperature, and wind gusts, which is one, especially in South Australia. It's a lot of wind gusts, which is, we weren't expecting. They're probably my main one. All right, what else have you got other than Windy that you use? Um, I've got bushfire.io, which just gives me a, a rough area of where, if there is like floods or bushfires, just to detour. Mm. Detour? Yeah, I think that's detour. De detour. Detour. detour from that spot is what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'd highly recommend getting that one, just to, especially in bushfire season through summer. Speaking of, always good to jump on the state's DFES site so you know where you can have campfires if there's any fire bans and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the one I use every day is wiki camps. Um, so reviews, but not just that. There's like water fill stops, dump points, attractions. Oh, so much information on Not that. just campgrounds. Yeah. Um, and you can plan in it and you can keep checklists in it. Um, and you've got a compass in it so you know where, what direction to point the van so you're in the shade. Yeah, checklists has come in handy as well. Like yeah, especially at the start. Checklist, just when we're about to leave, just a couple of things that we go through and make sure that we're, you know, ticking all the boxes. <laughs> so another one that I've got, that I use all the time is fuel map. So it just gives you me a rough idea of what sort of price is and where the actual fuel stations are, mm. which makes it super easy for me. And then linked in with that is all the discounted apps for fuel and stuff yeah. as well. So like um, the 7-Eleven app you've got yep, that yes. locks in a price. Um, you've got um, like your Woolworths rewards so that you get discounts off for Caltex or whatever, flybys, things like that. Every little bit of discount helps when you're traveling. Yeah. Um, other apps, I guess, like I've got a spending tracker and I think that's literally what it's called just for keeping our budget on track so that we know what we're spending. Yeah, um, Spotify is probably oh, Spotify. one of the main ones we use. Yeah. Like, always using that for the music as well as um, podcasts, podcasts quizzes, quizzes, trivia, so, audiobooks. So that's good. Apes. Um, what other apps? Oh, Polar Steps is one I use a lot. So you can upload oh, yeah. photos, which will be good at the end of the trip, and it kind of maps out where you've gone by satellite location, and you can give access to certain people, like if you want your family to be able to see exactly where you are. Yeah, so, so the stalkers can keep watching, and <laughs> know where we are, in case we haven't seen the news, because um, if we're free camping or we're out in the bush, yeah. we don't watch the news or anything like that and they Which can is, let us know yeah what happened fires or what have you that's what kind of what happened when we were in south australia at streaky bay there was yeah. a shark attack the day before we were at that same beach and yep. we didn't know because we were oh, off yeah. off grid and it was only because my mum mentioned it because she saw where we were but yep. yeah crazy it's, yeah um that's pretty much the main ones or oh, hip camp is another camping one though i'm sure everyone's heard of these but other than wiki camps there's hip camp so that's like your private paddocks on farmer properties and things like that how do you film for youtube all uh, right well like amateurs yeah so <laughs> we put a lot of time into it and a lot of effort into the episode oh that that's do. insane so i watched um youtubers say that they spend like anywhere from 20 to 80 hours a week on it i was like no way no chance, but uh, i'll tell it's you right now hard. they definitely do yeah especially like i love the drone so that's one thing that i'm really finding fun and interesting to do and just going through all the videos that i've done with the drone just to try yeah. and find the right ones for the videos um and just takes a while filming as well so like when you've i get dropped off down a track and then i have yeah. to film the car and then he has to come back and pick me up. You're, um, lucky, you're lucky I pick you up. <laughs> and then just editing in general is what takes up the most amount of time, yeah. like hours and hours for 15 minutes of the episode. But yeah. anyway. It's good fun. So, like, it does take a long time to do, but it's something that we can look down down the track and watch yeah, it. Yeah, memories. And reminisce. Because I wish we did it when we did the New Zealand trip. Yeah, so pretty much. Like little stuff like that. So. Yeah, video captures so much more for your holiday memories, like... Got galahs going nuts here. Yeah. Yeah. But and yeah, these damn white galahs, they just keep following us. It's like the difference between wedding photography and a video that you get at this special day. Like, you can watch back and sort of remember extra little bits. So, yeah. we did it for us, and if we get to help people along the way with cool places to visit, then it's a bonus. Yeah, because we mainly do it just like a journal for us, and then like family members and friends want to oh, know yeah. what we're yeah. up to and stuff like that. So, that's why we because we're YouTube. not the best at keeping up to date on socials <laughs> we're a bit behind um 
Oh yeah, and most of the filming, like right now, we use a GoPro. Yep. Um, so we've, is it the nine? Yeah, I think so. Hero nine um, that we've got. And we did have to buy accessories. So we got the media mod kit, which means you can plug in mics. And you got your fluff board, yeah. Yeah, the little koala ear things. So um, we have the road wireless mics um, just because of the wind and like traffic noise and galas yeah. and like whatever other noise that kind of interrupts. Or if you're in the car, just the ambient noise of the engine and stuff like that interrupts. Yeah. So um, I think you definitely need some kind of a mic set up if you want to do it. You can get yeah. other options that are like connected to the camera itself, not on your person, but we figured if you're further ahead on a hike or something like that, it'll yeah. still pick up your audio if you want to say something Excuse and me. Leaf dragging. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we run with most of the time. Otherwise, our phones. Yeah. We've got Galaxy phone. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Phones, drone, and, and the GoPro. GoPro. Oh, and the other accessory for the GoPro we got is um, uh, underwater one, which we haven't really used too much yet, but I'm hoping we will once we get back to the top of WA and stuff when yeah. we're more at those kind of... Out of the crop section. Yeah, like more Ningaloo Coast kind of area is what yeah. I'm planning to use that at. Um, and then for doing like YouTube specifically, like the question, I guess um, there's lots of different apps. So depending on what you're comfortable using. So like I've for work and for my previous business, I used to use Adobe. There's CapCut, there's Filmora, like there's a million different apps and you can search literally how do you do a YouTube video and there'll be well, recommendations on YouTube of what to use. Those ones are super easy because Kira's trained me to use it. <laughs> so I know how to use it now. Yeah. Like, and it's super easy. Some are paid, some are free. And like CapCut, um, one of the free ones is one that we use often for reels and stuff like that. So um, yeah, there's a million apps to choose from depending on what device you're running. But yeah, our laptop's ancient. So we're just struggling with it till it dies and mm. it'll do the trick. Keep pushing on. All right. Um, Last question, which we got multiple times. When will you be home? Yeah, big question. So, Never. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Like we've, we don't know. Yeah, we're lucky enough. We don't have an end date. We can pretty much go for a bit longer. Yeah. Um, we don't want to miss out on anything, but there's so much to see still. I so, think... Yeah, we, what you say? Oh, at this rate, it'll be over a year, our trip. Like, I know a lot of people try and stick to the 12 months. Like, we've hit six months and we've kind of just done New South Wales. So, um, leaving from Perth the southern way. Our yeah. only plan was basically avoid the top end during wet season. Yeah, so we've basically been dictated by the weather a yeah. lot. Um, but we've also, like we said before, we've gone inland, not just hugged the coast for the yeah, lot, yeah, yeah, um, so which has been great. Highly recommend doing that. Going into some of these country towns, yeah, it's heaps better. So much better. Like we found this beautiful place here, yeah, just for a start, free camp tonight. So we don't know how long it's going to take us. Um, we yeah. don't have a set destination to be at for a certain time or anything like that. Let's just say I've just had a baby niece, and we'll be home before she goes to uni. Yeah. So let that <laughs> sink in. <laughs> Um, that's it. Oh, so another question I've got is, it's time, well it's not really a question is it, it's more of a statement, it's time to shave the beard. Get a haircut. Yeah, get a haircut and get a real job, but uh, <laughs> it's not happening. No. Nope. So <laughs> the beard stays and so does the... The locks, the goldy locks that are getting lighter in the sun. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry about that, but it stays. He's going to stay hairy for a while. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we did have a question on Facebook, well not so much a question, but on Facebook someone asked um, if we could do some like cooking stuff particularly easter cooking we've missed easter yeah. i'm the worst cook so we just throw stuff together from packet mixes <laughs> i'm the worst cook because you don't cook that's because i need yeah. killed people last time I cooked. raw chicken raw chicken <laughs> Not good. Um, it's either raw or it's burnt with us so i don't know we just and we do the same old boring meals because we try and stick to a budget i guess so but we might chuck one in we'll, we'll on we the, might do a sneaky or something we'll do a sneaky one we'll see what we can do yeah. <laughs> that's what you guys want to see I oh might, yeah i might even cook something up and maybe <laughs> <laughs> you can cook it i don't know if i'll eat it well, yeah, true. <laughs> and then yeah if you guys have any other questions that you want to know that we haven't really touched on they're the ones we got from instagram and facebook but yeah if you want to drop anything down below in the comments yeah. maybe we'll do another one in a few months or something yeah don't make them too tricky yeah <laughs> that took ages to talk <laughs> anyway time to relax uh, 
see you next time. <laughs> Bye. On a round and about. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap, people. <laughs>